join me in the catchphrase of the mayor of the morning.
how soon they forget. <laughs> Didn't the same thing happen to Shelly Winters? You guys know that story? Yes. Somebody asked her to audition, she came in with a paper bag, put two Oscars on the table and said, some people think I can act. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> How embarrassing to be that casting director, right? Actually, I walked into a casting office one time, the casting director's like, Mark, it's so great to see you. I said, oh, it's so nice to meet you. She said, meet you, I cast you. <laughs> so from now on, I say, nice to see you. <laughs> My memory, what's up? How are you? You got a cool haircut. Thank you. It's awesome. You have a question? Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. What's the best um, prank you prank on the guys? <laughs> Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Sorry, we're all, we all think you're adorable. Um, the best prank I've played on the guys is never playing a prank on the guys. <laughs> Right? Because that's just expected. They expect you to play a prank on him. So I do the opposite of what's expected of him. I haven't played a prank on him. You know why? I'm, I'm serious. You know why I have not played a prank on him? I'm scared. <laughs> You're really cute. Bye. He's looking at me like... Sure, what do you mean by that, buddy? Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, my question was, what are your favorite type of seeds to build, and if you enjoy playing the hero or the villain more? I'm always the hero. The person. <laughs> okay. Sure. I don't know this thing. I don't know this dichotomy of hero and villain. I'm just going for what I want. Messing with it. Yeah. Uh, that's what I do. I know. I like being specific. Um, yeah, no, for real, I always feel like I'm the hero. And I always always act like I am the hero. And I let you guys interpret whether or not my behavior is appropriate or not. <laughs> Most of the time I get from you all that it's not appropriate. <laughs> Which, which is startling to me, because as I'm reading the script, I'm like, this is totally appropriate behavior. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about what happened to me when somebody recognized me from Dexter? Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. Ear muffs for any kids out there. Um, yeah, somebody recognized me. It was in a supermarket, talking with people all around. Oh, you're Paul from Dexter! <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an asshole! <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great! Okay. Well, I mean, he was a hero too, right? He was trying to get his family back and protect his wife from a really bad dude. Serial killers are bad dudes. Huh? Yeah, I know. What was the other question, though? So I played the hero all the time, but... What were your favorite types of scenes to I like scenes that have like big arcs, in them, you know, that start out one way and have a twist and take you in a complete other direction. I don't know if that's too vague question, but uh, with with grit, with human content, with stuff going on between stuff, stuff, whatever that stuff is, and it's gritty stuff you can chew on. I like those kinds of scenes. What's that? I'm gonna chew on grit now that you told me not to. <laughs> What's up? Hey. Um, I had a question about, um, so you know, now I have Jack, so what do you think would have happened if Lucifer had gotten to Jack before the Winchesters? Did, how do you think the show would have been like right now? The show would have been over. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, the show, shows that are all good shows are all about you not getting what you want. What's so interesting about getting what you want? 
I mean, in drama, it sucks in life if you don't get what you want. Right? <laughs> but we, we actually pay to see people not get what they want in drama. Um, yeah, I showed you over. You know, we'd, uh, I trained him to be, you know, the great demigod that he is. And we would wreak havoc on the universe and remake it in the image that we think is more appropriate. I think Lucifer gave sort of an indication of what he thinks creation should be, right? Did he get that indication in an episode yet? Huh? And he admired God and God's artistic ability and then thought he went south a little bit. Huh? You think humans could be a part of it? They just have to be chained up and restrained and know their place. I'm joking. I don't think that. Um, so, what do you think of Jack? <laughs> I think he's adorable. He is adorable. He's a little baby boy. Yes. Yeah. And he's learning how to be a non-baby boy. He's my buddy. Thank you. And I'm going to tell him a dad joke when I see him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. Spade's been teasing me, though. He says, yeah, somebody, somebody, I don't know, maybe it's not Spade. Um, somebody was telling me they have a dad joke, and they're not telling it to me. Was that Spade? Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Well, I'm hey. Got my question already. Okay. Um, it happens to me all the time. Um, how is your relationship with Jared and Jensen on screen as opposed to off screen? <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to off screen. I mean, off screen, we're, we're friends, you know, and they're great guys. On screen, they hate me. <laughs> and they want to hurt me. And I can see it in their eyes every time they see me. It makes me a little self-conscious. <laughs> like, why do you guys hate me? Every time you see me, you look like you're, you're trying to kill me right now. That's basically our scenes together. What's that? Because <laughs> you like their mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the only reason. They didn't like me before that. That just gives me... Stepsons are not happy. That's true. <laughs> but they didn't like me before that. Dean's got that whole... Dean's got that whole nature thing going on, right? Like, once you're something, you're something for life, and there's no way that you can be anything else. I what? You will cast staff Are we going to this argument? <laughs> When somebody stabs you, you do things to them. <laughs> but that's just a normal reaction. You're so evil, you killed the enemy. <laughs> what was I doing? I was standing in the alternate universe. He came over and stabbed me. I was just standing there. God, I don't get a break. I, um... Wait, I'm still, I'm still struggling with this. <laughs> What? A shoe? Okay, so my question is, once Lucifer sees that Jack's not going to go dark side, do you think Jack would have a positive influence on Lucifer? Wait, why are you assuming that he's not going to go dark side? Because <laughs> he's too nice. <laughs> nice people can't go dark side? No, not Jack. But I thought he had it in his nature. No, things wrong there. What? <laughs> oh, here we go. And the cycle of abuse continues. Look at this. I'm in the middle of a maelstrom. Um, what was your question even now? I'm completely... Okay, so my question was, when Lucifer sees that Jack is probably not going to go dark side, do you think Jack will have a positive influence on Lucifer? And then my second question was, where's Adam? <laughs> because if Michael's insane, where's Adam? Adam is no longer with us. No! 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 False! No! Do I think Jack will have a positive influence on his father? No. <laughs> Thank 
Thank you. You, you might. <laughs> I'm still I'm still over in this question. <laughs> like so. Hey Mark, you're obviously a very accomplished actor. So, other than Lucifer, what was your favorite character to play? Fine, fine. <laughs> Gavin Q. Baker the Third. You guys know Gavin? Woo! You guys see Gavin's the work? Yeah. The closer. Oh. Yeah, that was my favorite. Uh -huh. That was my favorite character. Um, just because he was flamboyant and powerful, and the smartest dude in the room, and conquered everybody. It was, it was, I don't know, I just loved it, I thought. It was James Duff basically <laughs> come to life. James Duff is the executive producer of the show, and he's a very, very powerful, awesome dude. And um, I, I thought it was sort of an homage to him. And Carson Kressley and Tim Gunn, my two favorite. Fashionistas. <laughs> I love those guys. Those good. Um, so that was my favorite part, it because it, it was sort of off the beaten track of what you know people normally classify me as sort of a bad guy villain type, and this this wasn't a villain at all. It was sort of, he was the real hero of the story for for Kira's character. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ashley. Spelled the normal way. <laughs> Wait, say that again? My name's Ashley and it's spelled the normal way. Okay, why would it be? Because yesterday, uh, we had a lot of spelling issues. Uh, <laughs> I had, oh, I had spelling issues? I had spelling issues? No. Yeah, it's my dad. Misha. No. Misha. Huh? Misha. We were the cookie. Oh. <laughs> yes, we were the spelling issues. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> I had, an, I had an, an ears attack while I was signing uh, autographs, so I was sort of out of it for half of it. So if I signed in Chinese, maybe, <laughs> or there's just some incomprehensible message on it, it's because I was spinning out and didn't know where I was. What's up? Hi. Um, yesterday you were my first photo op ever, so thank you. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> um, was question, it good? It was. Cool. Nice, you know, just a first smile, so. Um, yes, or my question is, I see. I loved you in Being Human and um, uh, Smart People. Did Supernatural help you prepare for those roles at all? Since they're a little supernatural as well. Uh, not, not that I'm aware of. But you know, I think all, all of your experiences sort of, you know, contribute to whatever you're doing. But not that I'm aware of. Do you see similarities in those characters? Aside from them being on the outside, hated by their sons. <laughs> And family, and you know, similarities definitely. Kind of bad guy. Bad guys. You thought Bishop was a bad guy? I mean, no, yeah. not entirely. He was just yeah. trying to. He's just a normal vampire. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get along. Yeah. And so that was my uniform thing. I think I just, I have a. <clears throat> I don't know if this is good or bad, but I sort of relate to being on the outside, looking in. Sort of grew up that way, I feel like, on the outside of the family, looking in. You know, I sort of felt like the nerd in high school on the outside, looking in. You know, the cool kids liked me because I got straight A's and they could cheat off my paper. But I wasn't in the cool crowd. You know, I was doing martial arts and crazy things that just weren't. Social. I'd be the guy standing against the wall to dance, never dancing. So I think you know that that experience is what translates over to these characters who are sort of not antisocial, but on the outside, you know. And, and no matter how hard they try, they just can't seem to get in. And they do want to get in. Bishop wanted to. I think you know, uh, maybe even Jedekiah. Uh, but I think that's just my life experience. <laughs> Um, but, yeah. Does that make sense? Cool. Peace. Hi. What's up? Uh, I just get so embarrassed when I do that. Thank you. Um, my question is, what was an embarrassing part of high school for you? Oh, God. <laughs> You know what? 
this is sort of, sort of weird because I ended up going to this Catholic high school. <laughs> uh -huh. Same. Yeah. And I had to work to pay for my books and all that stuff. And, you know, but I was sort of poor. And my mom had to sacrifice a lot for me to go there. So I really took it very, very, very seriously. And I, I, wanted, I wanted to be a part of something you know, bigger than me. But I, I could never. And I felt that there, sort of. But the most, most embarrassing thing to me was nature wasn't moving fast enough for me, right? Like, I was five, one, through like most of high school. I didn't shave until I was like 20, three. I did everything late. And it was so embarrassing, you know, like for me, because all my friends were like, oh, it's all and apes, and I'm just like this little boy. I was a little boy until I was 17, and then I sprouted up like 5'10", with arms like this big <laughs> And zits, you know, that I could see if I looked down. It just felt, it just felt, it was embarrassing, you know, because none of the girls that I like seemed to like me. I'm not, I swear I don't want pity! <laughs> I mean, it felt like I was on the outside, right? Like, like I was serious when I said that. Without other question. Because I grew up later than everybody else in every way, you know? And, and it was embarrassing. You know, they made you take showers together, and I just felt like, oh, this is so weird with everybody. It's, it's, I don't like this. Right? They had they no sensitivity for, I don't know how it is now, but they, they had no sense that children feel things. The same. Right? It's, it's the same? The same. Oh, God. You, it's I, the same. Check this out. Here's my first stage experience. I was doing a play in fourth grade. It was about the founding of California. Oh, my. So I'm standing across, I was playing Father Unabuna Sarah. Father Sarah. <laughs> A Spanish monk, go figure. And I was standing opposite my friend, who was just a goofball. And we're live, we're in front of like parents and stuff. And he he's saying his lines, and he had the stupidest look on his face, and I started laughing. <laughs> Which you know, to, to anybody who studies acting, if anybody. That's a spontaneous reaction, and that's kind of good. It's unexpected, right? If I were a teacher of acting, I'd say, oh, that's awesome. I'd praise the kid, even though it went exactly the opposite of the way the scene was supposed to go. <clears throat> my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Roth, grabbed my ear when I got off the stage. I was just laughing, a little boy, having fun with my friend Scott Pereira, <laughs> who was actually Spanish and should have been playing my part. She tore, she grabbed me by my ear and dragged me all the way through the auditorium and out the door by my ear. That's how crazy teachers were. Can they do that today? No. No. Not that. No. I saw her hit somebody over the head with a set of keys. <laughs> my friend Jimmy Koufax was fighting somebody and they were under the desk. We used to fight all the time. We were very angry kids. <laughs> We were fighting every day, we and, and to break them up, she, she had this like macrame key chain thing with a set of keys like this on the end of it, and she just went oh, and hit him right over the top of the head. He's in fifth grade. That's where I grew up. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like I feel like. Youth is sort of an embarrassing and awkward time, at least it was for me. And um, it's it's funny, sort of looking, not funny. It's, I guess it's sort of funny, 40 years later, looking back on it and wondering why I got so upset about things, but why not? You don't have the context, you have, you, your life is just so immediate when you're that young. So it feels like it's gonna go on forever. I swear to God, I thought I would never go through puberty. That's how, I mean, so that's too much information. But, you know, when you're that young, you think the tragedy is never going to end. You're always gonna be in this place. And you really can't see over the little bubble of your, your life into the future. 
So, God, that was a long answer. We went everywhere. <laughs> was that right? I tried to give you guys the real deal. I tried to give you guys me. Hi. What's up? Hi, I'm Nina, and I just wanted to know if you um, would think that Lucifer and Bishop would have been friends or foes. Yeah. And do you find them similar at all? I mean, I think they could have been allies, perhaps, but I don't know that they would ever be friends. I'm not sure how capable Lucifer is of having friends. Do you know what I mean? I mean, Bishop didn't really have a lot of friends other than, you know, Sam, so. Not Sam, but Aiden. Sam <laughs> Sam. And Aiden didn't treat Bishop very well, did he? No. Um, I hated that interpretation, by the way, but, um, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think, I don't think Lucifer can be friends with anyone at this point. I think there's a, there's a point in which a, a person is so scarred by their experience that without a lot of help, it's difficult to, to, to break through, you know, and, and, and become receptive. And I don't see Lucifer sitting on a psychologist's couch anytime in the future <laughs> to work out his father issues and his issues with his brothers. I mean, Bishop, on the other hand, had a job to do, and I think he considered himself sort of the, um, the leader of his people, and really wanted to liberate him. He was a liberator, you know, and, and so it's, it's a more constructive, even though it's destructive to us humans, more constructive sort of outlook and, and, and idea for the future for his, his people. And um, I don't think their two worlds would, would mix well. Thank you. That makes sense? Yeah, thank you. Okay, can you just say, oh my dad, once? Please? Please. Oh my dad. 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 You said, oh my dad. I always say, oh my dad now. Yeah. I think this part is taking me over. <laughs> What's up? Hi. Um, so I wanted to know if you think that. Lucifer losing his powers is gonna change a little bit how he acts now, or his personality, or the way he views himself, or anything. Yes. <laughs> how do you think it's gonna change? Oh, I know how it's gonna change because I've done those episodes. <laughs> I love it. You love it? Yeah. That's awesome. I hope you do. <laughs> we'll see. We love you too. Oh, thank you. What's up? Hi. Hey. How are you? Not bad. How are you? I'm pretty decent. That's good. <laughs> you having a good time so far? Yeah, I've been here all weekend and it's been fantastic. Awesome. Waiting in line hasn't been too bad? Mm -hmm. Waiting in line hasn't been too bad? No. Good. You got all your friends here, fam? Yes. Yeah. I have a con mom now with one of the booths out there. So really? She helps take care of me while I'm Who here. Who is she? Uh, she uh, her, her name's Rochelle. She's down by the I'm Alive booth. Let's give Rochelle a shout out. She's awesome. Awesome. Lucifer was gone for like three seasons. What was it like coming back and getting back into that character and that mindset? I mean, um, it, it always feels like I never left. You know what I mean? Because we would see each other at, at events you know, through the years, so I never felt too far away, too far away from him. So it was, it was sort of nice to be back on the mic and, and play and play with the guys. Well, we missed you. Oh, thank you. I missed you guys too. I think the last time I did a con 
was like six years ago, and I was, I was like jonesing for my Supernatural fan. I noticed. I'm like, wow, oh, I haven't done this in a while. I want to see my fan. Even the ones who hate me. They made my like, interest too. Well, thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you, by the way. Thank you. Nice to meet you. What's up? Hello. Um, I was wondering, since Misha had said in his panel yesterday that he had a terrifying experience with Mickey Mouse, if you've ever been to Disney, and if so, what's your favorite park and what's your favorite ride? He had a terrifying experience with Mickey Mouse? Yes! <laughs> you gotta tell me what that experience was. <laughs> he said that he was at Disney and he got lost and the only thing that he saw was the giant Mickey Mouse and was terrified of it for some reason. How old was he? Four. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm thinking like, was this three days ago? <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, Mickey Mouse is a terrifying looking thing, right? I mean, just the idea, metaphysically, of a mouse being this big is terrifying. But I think, I think you know, the, the, that's a relative idea, right? I mean, Mickey Mouse in an amusement park, it's a little freaky and wrong, but it's kind of cool. In your bedroom at 2 o'clock in the morning, weird. Really weird. Um, I, that said, I used to love Disneyland. I had a... I had a she asked me about Disneyland, though, didn't no, you? Disney World. World. Yeah. Disney World is the one that's here, about like five minutes away. <laughs> I was there. I was there. It was my first time, and I really loved it. But I was, I was segueing into my love of Disneyland. Okay, I used to have a... What? Are you guys like... premium passport for Disneyland before I got veneers, so like before 2009, I would go four times a week. Yes. Now, check this out though. Like for one of my birthdays, I took a bunch of bunch of people, actors, my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, just my girlfriend. Aww. Um, <laughs> but a couple of them are really cynical. They're like, yeah. Your muskets, your muskets. Fuck this place, corporate, whatever. It's gonna be lame. They were talking to you. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna be like five minutes, ten minutes. We'll, we'll have a good time with Mark. You know, a drink, and then we'll leave. Flash to one o'clock in the morning. They're like, because <laughs> I turned to those people and I said, "Check it out. You think this is corporate? You think it's all nasty and cynical? You haven't been to Disneyland with me." <laughs> And when you're with me, you leave your adulthood at the gate. <laughs> and you're five. <laughs> Except you're tall enough to go on all the rides. <laughs> and it works. I could turn anybody around, taking them to Disneyland for a day. So I had a love affair with Disney, and, and, I, and going um, a couple days ago was pretty cool, going to Magic Kingdom and, and seeing basically Anaheim Disney on steroids, <laughs> bigger, better, you know, versions of it, and the Epcot Center was cool, I had to eat and drink around the world, right, that was cool. It was funny, we went to a French restaurant. And this person comes up and uh, how many people would you like to sit uh, here? <laughs> Terrible French accent. And um, don't tell Tracy I said this, my wife. She's like, nah, that's a fake French accent. I'm like everybody here's got a French accent, that's all fake. Try to speak French to them, see if they see if they respond. <laughs> so she starts speaking French and person's like, I did it, I did it. speak French guys, but I can't speak on demand, so that's why I'm not speaking. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> she's really French. <laughs> so it was great to go to these places and everybody spoke the language or was steeped in the culture. It was really, really cool. I really like that place. 
Did I answer your question? The only other one I had was, what is your favorite ride? The Queen. Oh, man. <laughs> what? Soaring. I didn't, you know, I can't do soaring anymore, but I did like soaring. I didn't do that this time. I can't do any of those rides anymore. I got I do like the My favorite ride is Peter Pan. I want to say it. Yes, I wait for two hours in that line. Because there's nothing I like more than floating over Big Ben in that ship. It's fun. It's even more fun was when my when my stepdaughter was little, we'd get in the boat and I'd be okay, just hold on for the drop. And she'd look at me, what? Yeah, that's right over on that corner. <laughs> that's terribly. <laughs> After a while, she'd say that, she'd just go, boom. <laughs> <laughs> she figured me out pretty quick. Hi. Uh, my name's Eleni, and first of all, you have very pretty eyes. I want you. Thank you. And my question is, what is it like, and essentially what are the benefits, of having an army of teenage girls that scream hail Satan and will do your bidding in your eyes. So, 
sorry, I didn't mean to turn around. I just forgot what it was. Hi. Hey. Um, what are some obsessions you've had growing up? What? Um, obsessions. <laughs> Comic books. I love comic books. I collected Incredible Hulk comic books. And my brother collected Daredevil comic books. Yes! And, uh, what else? I was obsessed with sharks. I saw Jaws when I was a kid, and it permanently traumatized me. I look at it now, and I'm like, that's a really stupid looking shark. And that has still scared me to this day. I have this, I'm a certified diver, I, I, I'm a certified scuba diver, and I'm still terrified of a great white shark. Even though I know. Sorry, I got home. Oh, I'm revealing my fears, and here you guys snuck up behind me. Like a shark, like a great white shark. I know. Jeez. You want to tell a guy when you're coming home? Yeah, so sharks, and you know who else I was obsessed with when I was a kid? Brooke Shields. The shark of modeling, you go, right? Well, the Blue Lagoon, when I was 15, that just killed me. That's it, guys. I guess. <laughs> <laughs>